This is your reminder that the BBC has yet to address the consistent transphobic leanings in its news coverage. And while the team behind Doctor Who is not connected to this in any way, since this is a BBC-owned property, I'm going to keep pointing it out until the problem gets resolved. Links in a pinned comment below if you don't know what I'm talking about. I'll stop saying it when it stops being a problem. Okay, needed to get that out of my system. Everything is conspiring to throw off my workflow today. I had so much stuff that I was gonna get done. Today was gonna be like the most productive day I've had so far this year. I had a plan. Freaking Star Wars trailer drops. Okay, I can fit that in. Trailer reactions don't take that much work. The BBC confirms the standing rumor that Stephen Moffat is coming back to write an episode of Doctor Who for Shooty Got was upcoming series. I say is going to, has already written. He's already written. Like, in terms of timing, this was going to have to drop now because, like, the, the credits are going to be official soon for like who gets credit for what so we were gonna find out they might as well make an announcement out of it i consider just making a short expressing my frustration and directing you to stuff i've already done and i'm still gonna direct you to stuff i've already done but i'm not gonna do it as a short because i know for a fact that shorts are on a completely different algorithm that'll be fine by that'll be I can't even talk. That'll be found by people who don't normally watch my stuff and don't know what I'm talking about. And the people who normally watch my stuff on the main channel may well miss it. So let's, here's the bullet point. I'm not happy about this. And it's not because I think it won't be good or that Moffat won't do a good job. I am existentially, philosophically infuriated by this. So, the short and clean version of why is that this upcoming era of Doctor Who is feeling increasingly incestuous. It is doing exactly what I was terrified of doing, which was to circle back and just milk nostalgia, bring back everything we can think of that people liked before and just do that again. They brought back Tennant and they brought back Catherine Tate. And I liked those specials, but that was also, that was the, that was it for the nostalgia. I was good. I was set. I was set for nostalgia. Russell T. Davis coming back in and of itself, I wasn't afraid of. Although I'm going to clarify something. All right. This is a point, point where I will direct you to stuff I've already said. Here is a video that I've already made where back when it was just a rumor of Moffat coming back and I expressed my frustrations. Most of what I'm going to say here is going to be a reiteration of that. So if you want those thoughts, they're still current. And then there was a video that I made over my secondary channel, The Break Room of Geeks, talking about why following the um, Christmas special and the realization of how we're just leaping back into the whole mystery box style of storytelling that RTD bled dry during his initial run, and then it was bled dry further by Moffat, and then Chibnall, and I'm so tired of, that we're just getting that again, straight up. I expressed in this video my frustration and the lack of enthusiasm that I'm starting to get towards Doctor Who. And to be clear, if you haven't seen that video already, lack of enthusiasm doesn't mean I'm not gonna watch it or that I'm not gonna hope it's gonna be good, nor do I think I'm at a point where even if it is good, I'm gonna be a party pooper and go like, well, that was crap. Because honestly, I didn't think the specials were gonna be very good, but they were. I liked them, they turned me around. I can be turned around on all this. I can only tell you right now where I'm at right now. And when RTD was first announced, I really hoped he would not just do what he did before. And so many 
factors just indicate that that is what's being done. From bringing back uh, Tennant and Tate, and yes, they didn't stick around, but still, bringing them back to bringing back Murray Gold for his bombast that I was kind of, frankly, happy to be done with. I like Murray Gold's music. He's done some amazing tracks. He did great work, but I was also done with him. I was liking the more ambient, atmospheric sound that we were getting from Saguna Canola, and like now we're just back to Murray Gold again and now we're bringing back old writers. When RTD was first announced, I had really hoped that a more mature writer would come at this. And I want to clarify what I mean by that because I said that in that break room video too and people completely misunderstood what I meant. When I said more mature and I referenced work like Children of Earth or Years and Years or It's a Sin, I didn't mean I literally want more adult content in Doctor Who. That's not what I meant by mature. I meant mature in terms of themes. I meant things that are just being being approached from a more mature mindset than the frankly often juvenile approach he had with his era of Doctor Who, especially in that first series, which I don't think we're going to go back to that. I don't think we're going to go back to farting aliens and burping garbage cans. But like, when I say more mature, I meant a more mature style of storytelling, not the doctor says the F word and there's all this implied, you know, just absurdity. Yeah, adult absurdity, which is what Torchwood tried to do and it didn't work. But it's why I cited Children of Earth because that is mature storytelling, not adult storytelling, mature. It is mature themes dealing with heavy ideas of, of loss and grief and how you how you move on from having done something horrible and what if you have to do it again? Like there's so much great mature storytelling in that and that was the mentality, not necessarily literally telling those stories again, but that more that sense of having grown up was what I hoped RTD would bring. And maybe he still will, but I'm getting more and more and more frustrated and nervous as more and more and more and more stuff that was just the ephemera of the earlier eras just coming back and now we've got Moffat. And look, maybe it'll be good. And I like Moffat's work. He's written multiple of my favorite episodes of the modern era. And also, while I won't cop that his best, absolute best work was written while RTD was the showrunner. I will cop to the fact that the episodes he did write when RTD was the showrunner was his strongest run of episodes. There wasn't a dud in the bunch. So, like, I'm not saying they're not going to work well together. I'm not saying Moffat isn't going to turn in a great script. I'm saying this isn't feeling like let's revive Doctor Who into a new age. This feels like let's Let's defibrillate a dying patient and do what used to work. And that, to me, for any franchise, is the death knell. That is a doom spiral where you just keep doing what you used to do. And that'll work initially for a little while. But when it stops working, you have done no work to move forward in a new direction. And you've trained your audience to expect you just to circle back again. And some of them are gonna get annoyed if you don't. Franchises that last this long need to have an eye forward, ahead. How do we evolve? How do we do something different? How do we not just repeat the same thing? And that doesn't mean drop all the iconic stuff. There are still staples. There are still things you can pull on. There are things you can bring back. But this is bringing back so much that this, th Calling this RTD2, Russell T. Davies era two, Mark II two, or 2.0 or whatever, it is literally just that. It's the same thing again. And I want to be wrong. As I am, as is always the case, when I am skeptical about anything, whether it's something that I love, like Doctor Who, or something that I'm over, like I'm like I am with a lot of Star Wars at this point. I want it to be good. When I when I express doubt and criticism and skepticism, I don't want to be right. I want to be wrong. And again, I was wrong about the specials. They found a way to do something that I thought this show should never, ever, ever, ever do, which was have an actor who already played the Doctor come back and play the Doctor again and do it in a way that actually justified doing that and do interesting and new things with it. So it is still absolutely possible that that approach and that that injection of doing something new and unique could still be there. Shudy Gajwa's performance certainly so far has not felt like that's a recycling of Tennant or anybody else. 
So like there are things to hold on to and I want to be wrong, but for crying out loud, you couldn't even wait until the second season of his stuff before you started bringing back the other most demanded to return writer on the freaking show. You couldn't even wait a season before doing that. <sighs> I don't know whose fault this is. I don't know if this is the fault of RTD himself, that he just wants to work with all the old people that he worked with. And in and of itself, that's not a problem. There's nothing wrong with wanting to work with your friends or work with people that you know you have a good rapport and, and uh, an established thing with. There's nothing inherently wrong with that. But again, the franchise is bigger than him and he did not create it. So getting stuck and circling back to do his era again is not healthy for Doctor Who as a property, as a franchise, as a show. So I, 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 I don't know if it's him. I don't know if he just wants to work with all the old people. I don't know if it's the BBC uh, who looked at the very divisive reaction that happened under Chibnall's era and was like, just bring back as much stuff as we can think of that worked back when the show had its highest ratings of the modern era. And I don't know if it's Disney pushing influence. Now, I actually have a video coming out tomorrow that's already shot where I do talk about Disney and Doctor Who a little bit. And I bring up the fact that at present, we do not have solid proof that Disney is putting its thumb on the scale in terms of the creative decisions or casting or anything of that nature. Disney's absolutely uh, influencing the marketing, but again, I'll talk about that tomorrow. For right now, I can't rule out the possibility that Disney's the one going, hey, we're paying to stream this and we're throwing a bunch of money in to do a bunch of marketing on it, do the version that was most popular. I mean, yeah, I could buy that. Is there any absolute proof of that being the case? No. No, there, there, there really isn't. There's no smoking gun. But if people want to decide to blame Disney, go ahead, blame Disney. It could be Disney. It could be the BBC. It could be RTD. It could be all of them reaching the same conclusion for independent reasons. I don't know. All I know is every time there is an announcement related to Doctor Who that is just something that they did before again, I'm so tired. I'm so tired of that being the news. So help me. If they announce like, and the Masters and it's freaking John Sim again, I'm going to, I'm going to lose it. Like, I, I love this show, but I want this show to surprise me. And maybe it still will. I really hope that it will, but it makes me unwilling to go in assuming that that is likely. I can, for the sake of my own sanity, I can't look at them just bringing all this stuff back, all these people back again and think, oh, maybe they'll do something new. At a certain point, I'm, I'm just setting myself up for disappointment and I'd rather be surprised. And ultimately, this is why I can be a bit of a cynical person, because I like to think that I'm not so cynical that if something turns out to be good that I didn't think would, that I won't recognize it for the sake of my ego, because I said it'd be bad, so it needs to be. I don't do that. At least I don't think I do. So ultimately, I would rather be surprised that it's way better than I thought it would be than go in and imagining against the evidence in front of me, oh, this is definitely going to be something new and exciting and that something that I haven't seen before and then be let down. That's not to say that I encourage people to be as cynical as me. I don't. I'm just telling you why I'm where I'm at. Oh, and here's one extra thing. It turns out a detail I missed when I initially shot this was that RTD actually offered Chibnall a chance to come back and write an episode, which honestly bothers me way less. That seems like the nice, polite thing to do to seem like he's not shafting the other showrunner. So that does nothing to alter any of my opinions. Just interesting fact. 
I've still got other crap to do today, so that'll be it for right now. What are your thoughts on this? Whatever they are, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. Patreon pays the bills, enables me to do this as my living, or at least try to do this as my living, when news drops and trailer drops are not completely throwing off my entire freaking day. <laughs> but even if you can't help me out that way, um, like, share, subscribe. I'll be streaming later tonight. Um, it's my birthday this week, so there'll be that if you're watching this the day it comes out. But uh, don't worry too much about it. What I really want you to remember is whether this news excited you or infuriated you as it did me, no matter which is the case, you are beautiful. You are valid. And you are loved. You are the council. I'm just running the meetings. And until next time, this council is adjourned. God! Time for me to thank my highest supporting patrons, Robin Moore, Zubin Mutfula, Goddess Elida, Oliver B, Tarak, The Thing That Goes Doink in the Anime, Ruth, Solitary Pictures, Ulrich Bogdan, Loki Eris, that was a new one, that's why I paused, uh, Melinda Walters, Jen, Auntie Kate 808, Becky Sparks, Fernabi Likes Poodle, Robin Powell, Twisted Wishes, Tracy Scrabbit, Angry Casper, Dave Hall, Quite Bearish, Rosalind Bennett, <laughs> Pau Barabajagal, and Mary G. <laughs> if, if you want to support me as well and help keep these little buggers fed, um, check out my Patreon. Thanks so much. 